information systems in context, the information processes. So in this video today, we're going to have a quick introduction to the seven information processes. So if we look at the diagram here on the left, you can actually see the information processes at the center of the information system, which really highlights its importance because it is the one component within the information system that actually connects to all the other internal components of the diagram, the purpose, the participants, the data and information and information technology. It's central to all these things happening. Okay, so let's have a look at what these information processes actually are. So as mentioned, they are the seven of them, okay, which manipulate data within an information system. Now, they're not exactly in an order, but they're kind of in an order, but they do overlap in areas. Okay, and you'll understand understand more of what I mean as we go through them. So let's briefly have an overview of all these different information processes. So firstly is collecting. Okay, and collecting is the gathering of data and then it's entry into an information system. So it's twofold. The gathering of data may be how the data is obtained. Okay, so whether it's done through research and investigation or obtaining it from another information system, we obtain that data somehow and then we've got to get it into our information system which is achieved through using different input devices. So if you're on a computer right now, a desktop computer, you'd be entering in data through a keyboard and mouse. If you're looking at this on your phone or tablet, you enter data that way through your touch screen. Okay, so pretty much any input device allows for data to be collected and entered into a system. The next information process is organizing. And this is then once data is in the system, how is it arranged? Okay, so when I'm entering data into a word processor, I'm typing the characters and they appear on screen in the word processor, okay, on the emulated A4 page that the word processor shows. Okay, if I then decide I'm going to put in values to my computer, I might decide to use a spreadsheet. Okay, and a spreadsheet arranges data differently to a word processor in that everything is in columns and rows. Okay, so different software arranges data and or organizes data in different ways. And we select the software that is obviously most efficient to what we're actually doing. Okay, so in organizing, nothing's actually changing with the data. It's just being arranged. Okay, and we need to make that clear with organizing because then the next step analyzing is when we're starting to change data. Okay, so analyzing is the manipulation of data within an information system, reinterpreting it to give it more meaning. So if I use the example of word processing, once again, with organizing, I was just typing my data and it's appearing on screen. When I start using the software to break that data into paragraphs, create headings, change the colors and the fonts, that data becomes more readable, more interesting, and thus more meaningful. Okay, so I'm adding to the data, okay, making it more meaningful, which is analyzing. If I use the spreadsheet example, once again, if I'm entering in all my values and then I start putting formulas to calculate those values, that data is becoming information and more meaningful once again. Furthermore, with a spreadsheet, if I then decide to display that data in the form of a chart, so based on the calculations I got, I'm adding even more meaning to my data. Okay, so that is all analyzing. When you do searches, that's also analyzing, okay? And so analyzing is when we're transforming data to make it more meaningful, okay? Turning the data into information at its initial time. Now, we've been talking about these processes now. Now we need to talk about where this data is going. So the next step is storing and retrieving. And we need to understand how this works in relation to primary and secondary storage. So with my screen here, everything that is live on my screen, so this presentation right now, is in RAM at the moment. Okay, and RAM is volatile memory that if I pulled out the power, this would disappear forever. So once I click save, my data then gets moved from RAM into my secondary storage, which may be a hard disk drive or a solid state drive. Okay, if I then pulled out my PowerPoint now, that data is safe in that storage. It's still not healthy for my computer, but it's safe there and it's saved there. So that is the process of storing, okay? At the memory location where things are stored. Then when I wanna work on this data once again, I need to then retrieve this data from secondary storage, okay? So my solid state or hard disk drive and bring it back into RAM so that I can start working with it once again. Okay, so now that is the simple understanding of storing and retrieving. It's a lot more complex these days in that we have a lot of external storage devices. We have network storage devices, cloud storage devices as well, but we'll get to all that a bit later. But firstly, understand that simple understanding of being able to store data in another location and then retrieve it so you can work on it again. Now, the next information process is one that kind of underpins all the information processes, and that's processing itself. And this is the mechanical transformation of data using the system's processes. 
okay so this is actually where the data is uh, changed using the CPU of the computer okay the central processing unit which is the brain of any system okay so the mechanical change and it's going on all the time every operation goes through the CPU okay and so that processing is really a foundation information process and really important after processing we're talking about transmitting and receiving now transmitting and receiving also occurs at two levels within the system okay everything is connected to the motherboard and the motherboard uh, allows the, all the different devices which are connected to it to communicate with another with the bus lines on the motherboard. So that is one area of transmission within the system. But systems these days as well are also networked. So also external transmission is also possible. Okay, so we have our ports that allow our system to be physically connected to other devices. But then we've also got network hardware such as routers and hubs and switches and transmission media such as fiber optic cabling and wireless and Wi-Fi networks, which allows to tra uh, transmit to other devices and other systems globally. Okay, so transmitting and receiving can be as small as a system just communicating with within itself and also as large as systems communicating all over the world. And then the final information process is displaying. Okay, and that is how information is output by the system and presented by the information system. Now, one thing to clarify here is it's not just visual display. Okay, so obviously our monitors display things visually. Projectors also display things visually as well. Your tablet screen is displaying things visually. But it's also talking about things such as audio. Okay, audio is displayed through devices such as speakers. Okay, and we're talking about all the different media types in display. Text, image, audio, video, okay, and animation. All those things, how they're displayed by a system, okay? So the information being output back to the user so they can see the information itself and kind of, you know, completing what the user is using the system for, getting their information back. So I hope this video has given you a quick introduction to all these information processes. Okay, give me just a tiny bit of understanding. As said, okay, we're gonna go into all these information processes in a lot more detail throughout the course. Okay, so we've touched on them here and I hope this has given you a base understanding in going forward.